Hello everyone, thanks for coming for my talk. Uh, my name is Signal. Today we are going to talk about Go as a scripting language in Linux. A little bit about myself. I work at Cloudflare. Uh, as everyone here knows what Cloudflare is. Uh, yep, so I do performance and security at Cloudflare. I also like, I'm passionate about crypto, enjoy low level programming. Uh, yeah, so, and sometimes I do go. Uh, that's okay. Before we start, uh, I wanted to say um, sorry. Uh, who, by show of hands, who has been here last year? Oh, uh, so the talk title might sound familiar, but uh, because this nice lady decided to be born two weeks earlier than planned, I had to back out of the talk last minute, so I didn't deliver it. Uh, now everything is okay. You see the balloons with one, this is me celebrating one year and not delivering the talk at GopherCon, <laughs> which now is okay. <laughs> By coincidence, it's her birthday, but like all of, other, all of uh, other of you who haven't been here last year, so your congratulations, you're very lucky because if I have delivered this talk last year, you won't be hearing it today, so good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I have this why section. Why do you want to use Go as a scripting language? Well, I mean, this section is mostly for more developer generic conferences, so I have to persuade people. But here is GopherCon. We're all excited about Go, so I, I hopefully I don't need to persuade that Go is a cool scripting language, right? It's Go. This is uh, someone, or someone considers Python better. No? Well, still, we'll probably go uh, quickly. Uh, so, Go is probably easy to learn, write and read, uh, who disagrees? Uh, also, it has huge ecosystem of already ready code. You just, e you don't need to write everything from scratch, from self, if you see a nice library, you just can go get it into your, into your environment and you don't need administrative privileges for that. With some, for example, with some other scripting languages that w which have an embedded package management system. It's also compiled as strongly typed, so imagine you're writing a bash script to do a complex migration on your system, and which is 1,000 lines, and you, it executes the first 500 lines, and then you had a typo, and then it backs out, and your system is in consistent state. Whereas with a compiled strongly typed language, you have some insurance that the compiler will do some sanity checks before it even starts to actually execute in your code. It, and it's also low level enough for system task. Um, you can uh, call different kernel APIs which do not have like uh, wrappers yet. Uh, so you can do very like, you can go as low level as you want with Go. Potential use cases is uh, Go build system for your project. So if your project is in Go, why use like a Python based build system or a bash based build system if you can write your base build system in Go. Uh, quick Go. Prototyping, so sometimes you have the, oh, this is awesome idea, I'll quickly like do a proof of concept and you start typing, then you need to save the file, compile the file, run the file. Well, when you can execute Go files as script, you can at least like skip some of these stages in your quick development cycle and, and, and go faster. Um, easier script templating, there are some other reasons why you want your co uh, code to be in a source non-compiled form, and one of them is templates, you can, you don't have to write script, you can have a script template and if, uh, and have a templating engine, like parse it and then execute it. It's very useful case for configuration management system where everything is stored in text. And probably like anywhere else where you use Python nowadays, so like and Go is much better than Python. <laughs> okay, uh, so now how do you do that? This is a bit more complicated and to check it, um, what environment, let's try to identify what environment you need for a proper script. So you probably need an operating system, right? Um, you need some kind of programming language and an interpreter which will interpret this programming language. So for, for our use case, uh, we will use Linux as our operating system because I mean there's not much choice. I don't know any other operating systems in the world, so <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, real operating system, is that right? right? Uh, programming language, obviously Golang, we're at GopherCon, remember? Uh, we didn't have any drinks yet, so we're at GopherCon. An interpreter, and like, this is a bit tricky, 
So from the top of your head, you might think like, how do you interpret or execute Go source files? And like the Go tool chain has this tool, Go, go run, where you can go run and feed it a source Go file and it will run. So let's see if it works. So let's write ourselves a simple Troy Go script, which is like a plain example hello world program and try to run it with Go run. Uh, if you do that, it will work, um, seems okay. But by the way, all the uh, shell examples are, um, are like copy pasted from real terminal. Uh, this is my guarantee, so consider it as a real demo, which <laughs> doesn't fail unlike the previous speaker. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, so it works, but like real world scripts are uh, mo much more complex, so what do we usually need from a script? We needed at least like three things. We want the script to be able to parse common line arguments. Uh, we also want the script to return proper error code to the operating system because sometimes you don't use standalone scripts, you pipe them in a big like pipeline on your shell and error codes is the way how processes communicate with each other and the operating system, right? And also you want, don't wanna be typing like go run each time, you want just like, like like any other executables, you just want to mark the file as executable and you want to execute it as is, right? The same way you can do it with Py. So let's update our example to uh, check all these capabilities. So we will modify our hello world program to make it more a bit complex. So it will accept one common line argument and it will have a condition if you uh, pass string fail to the common line argument, it will exit with an exit status of 30 instead of like successful exit status. Uh, okay, and for the third thing, how do we make .go file executable on Linux? And like in the Unix world, the usually the response is you use a shebang line. Who doesn't know what a shebang line is? Good. Um, so it's a first line in any script. Uh, it's usually, well, it's not usually, it starts with a hash and exclamation mark and then uh, a pass to the interpreter which should be used to interpret the script, right? And uh, what it does, it tells your operating system which interpreter to use. Uh, by the way, somebody will, someone will tell you, it tells your shell which interpreter to use, which is not technically correct and I'll come back to that later, but it actually tells your operating system which interpreter to use for the script. Okay, so let's modify our a toy go script and add a shaman line. So here it is, is the top. So you just add go run and let's try to execute it. If you do that, you will see something like that. It will fail. And why it fails here is that it, the operating system tried to execute this file via the interpreter, but unfortunately the hash is not a valid command in Go. So most scripting languages accept the shebang line because like in bash, python, like hash is a command line. So the actual interpreter ignores the command line, but it, it's not the case with Go. So hash is not a valid command in Go. And there are other like interpreters, for example, Node.js, they uh, like, like hash is not a valid command in JavaScript, but they specifically made an exception to make shebang line work. And people ask it, the same from Go community, but somehow like the, the Go maintainers push back and they say that Go run is not to be used as a script interpreter, it's not its purpose. So uh, actually this feature has been pushed back and they don't add an exception for the shipping line. Well, I mean, if you don't get a support from official uh, sources, <laughs> people <laughs> usually go to Stack Overflow and, and find other smart people which can help them to create a workaround. So to overcome this uh, limitation, people on Stack Overflow came up with uh, an idea to exploit some of the behaviors of most shells. And most shells, if you don't specify any shebang line in your script, most shells will just try to execute your script line by line. Easy, right? And another thing which they came up with is in Unix for file system pass, double forward slash is the same as single forward slash, but luckily double forward slash is a valid command in Go. So they came up with, a with a, this approach. Uh, 
I call it, like, it's my terminology, it's not official, so Shellism line, okay? So it looks like a shebang line, but with some differences. So you replace a hash and exclamation marks with double forward slash, and you also add these weird things at the end to make the co common line parameter passing work. work. So, okay. Let's see. Let's see if it works, and let's now try to actually test the common line uh, um, parameter passing. So if you do that, you will see something like this. So it did execute properly, but you have all these garbage. And what happened here is, the good here is that s the script was actually executed and even the parameter passing worked. Uh, the bad thing is that the shell, when it executed the first line, it tried to execute the rest of the source file line by line. And uh, ag when it exited from go run. So that's why you see the garbage appended and obviously it failed, right? Well, Stack Overflow people, they never give up, right? <laughs> so they said, like, well, we can fix this. Like, we, we, we should just stop executing the shell uh, after it executed the first line. So they add this thing at the end again. So you see this whole huge line now, which is gross. Uh, so let, let's see if it works. So um, yeah, uh, if you execute like that, it seems good. So now let's test the failure condition. So let's tell the script to fail and return non-zero exit status. And we expect 30 here. If you run this, it will execute, but you will see some weird line appended called exit status 30. And when you check the real exit status, it will be one. Okay, so the good here is the script was executed, the parameter passing worked, and the shell terminated properly, right? The bad thing is it's the problem with the go run tool that go run masks if the exit status of your code is non-zero, it masks the real non-zero exit code of the script and always returns one. And then it also appends this extra output line with your real exit status. So this was delivered to Stack Overflow. And uh, but Stack Overflow people know we can fix this. So we can modify our shellism line, adding a code we check if there is a line appended with exit status, like exit status, parse this line, pass the real exit status, and return the real exit status. But like, I mean, I didn't even want to include an example here because it, 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 it is already too complex, right? So like, if you put this code somewhere on your server or like on your company and, and you, a new developer joins, they will see that they will just never understand what it is, right? So like compared to a simple Python shebang line, which is <coughs> easy, comprehensible, and understandable. Another thing which is not mentioned on Stack Overflow, this is my addition, is uh, there is another drawback of the solution. So uh, let's go back, uh, le let's try again with the shell in line. So let's execute our script from the shell. It works as intended, but now, Let's try to execute the same script, but from a, not from the shell, but from a, another process. Let, let's say from Python, right? I can do that. And if you do that, you get this error. And to understand why it happens, we need to pick uh, into Linux internals. So who here uh, is searching for a job? Uh, anyway, like this is an interview question, so pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so imagine you have a user process, and user process, it can be a shell or any other process, it wants to execute a script. So it issues a so-called exec call, system call, it tells the kernel, please execute this script in this file. Like in this case, it's, it's some Python script. So the way how it works, this exact system call will be forwarded to the Linux kernel, but because there are d many executable formats out there, so Linux kernel, needs to understand how interpreted this is executable format, right? So, and in kernel, there are like many modules responsible for parsing different executable formats. There is like uh, executable format ELF, which is a traditional executable file on Linux. There is like A out, which is an old Unix style executable format. There is a, and because it's a script, there is a executable module which is responsible for executing scripts. So the call will go there. And what this module does 
it actually parses the shebang line. So remember at the start, beginning of my talk, I told you it tells your kernel, your operating system, which interpreted you is not your shell because the shebang line parsing happens inside the kernel. So uh, the bin format misc, uh, sorry, the bin format script module will pass the shebang line, and in this case it will be Python, and it will run, uh, create a new process through the Python interpreter. Uh, this is why the shebang approach is different from the shellism approach. That in shebang approach, the processing, shebang processing happens inside the kernel, so it doesn't matter from which environment you call the script, uh, the kernel will know how to execute it. With the shellism approach, the shellism processing happens inside the shell, so if you call your executable scripts outside of the shell environment, I, the kernel will just don't know, doesn't know how to use it, how to execute it. Okay, so it seems like shell online, uh, shellism approach is not that good. Let's do a one more try with shebang lines, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that, so far we know that go round is no good. Uh, it doesn't return proper exit status. It cannot process uh, the shebang line. Shellism lines are also not good. They cumbersome. They do not work out the, the shell, and they rely on a... Uh, some shell behavior, which most shells support, but not every shell, so they it might be not very portable. So again, it, as it happens, if you don't have any official support, people come up with third-party tools, and someone, uh, people develop this custom tool called Go Run without a space. And this tool is much better, so it's built to compensate the lack of scripting support in the official Go Run approach. Uh, what it does is actually consumes and processes the shebang line, so basically it ignores the shebang line if you specify it, and it returns proper exit status. Uh, the link to the code is uh, there. You can download, compile it. It's quite easy. Uh, just do a go get. So let's try, try this tool. So uh, we, we have again our script with the uh, shebang line, so, but instead we just specify the custom tool as in our shebang line. Uh, let's try the parameter passing and works. Let's try the failure case. So yeah, no extra output here. Let's check the error status. It's what we expect. Let's try to call it from another process and not from the shell. It will work again because now we have a proper shebang line and processing happens in the kernel, right? And finally, like we have everything we want, uh, let's try to compile this code, right? So like imagine we uh, mastered it with a script and now we want to compile it to pro proper binary and it will fail. <laughs> <laughs> and why will it fail? For the same reason the original go run approach failed with the shebang line because uh, you, you made a workaround to execute, as, uh, to execute Go files as scripts, but when you compile them, the compiler does not understand the shebang line, the hash, so you also probably need an exception there, uh, but nobody will make you an exception in a compiler, right? So, uh, we were so close, right? So we have everything we want, but we failed. Okay, so we can't probably f solve this problem for everyone, but because Linux is the only real world operating system, we can probably solve this problem for Linux. So what I did is I, I took a closer look at other executable modules in the Linux kernel and one module got my attention called bin format misc, which basically means everything else, right? And this uh, custom modules allows users or administrators to add custom executable formats uh, from user space. Uh, so this module allows you to register custom interpreter for specific executables and scripts, and also uh, you can nominate your executables either by file header or probably by uh, extension. And surprisingly for a low-level kernel feature, and for Linux kernel in general, it has really great documentation, which I <laughs> can read there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'll give you a basic one-on-one. You communicate with this module via special virtual file system. Uh, you need to mount it first. Maybe if you have a recent systemd-based distribution, systemd will mount this file system for you, so you don't, you don't have to worry. And then once you have the file system, you describe to the modules 
uh, which files the system should interpret and which interpreter to use to interpret them. And it's done just by echoing a, a string in, a, in, a, in this file. So this is an example. We check if uh, the file system is mounted. Yes, it is, because systemd did it for us already. And then for go executables, we can use echo this magic string into, uh, into, into that file system. Uh, what it effectively means is we tell the operating system, if you encounter a, go, uh, a file with .go extension, uh, executable file with .go extension, and somebody tries to execute it, execute it via our custom go run interpreter. So the way how it works under the hood, so user sends an exec request again to the Linux kernel, uh, it is forwarded to the specific modules, it reads a file or a header or an extension, it finds that we already registered a string for, for .go files, and then it will re-execute the process via proper interpreter. Similar to, kind of similar to Shebang line. So let's try it. This is a simple version six, our script, but with nothing. There is no Shebang line, no shellism line, just plain Go call, right? Uh, assuming we registered our format with bin format misc, we can try to execute it. Okay, parameter passing works. Let's try the failure case, works, checking the error status, it's okay. Let's try to build this file now, and it will build fine, just because it's pure valid Go code, there are no things here. And let's try to execute the script from another process, it will also work, be again, because the processing happens inside the kernel, so it doesn't matter which environment is used to, uh, to, to call our script. Yes. Uh, Conclusions here, so Go may be useful as a scripting language. Do you agree? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, standard Shebang line is not compatible with Go. Uh, Goran was not intended to be used as a proper as a Go interpreter, but we have the custom Goran tool. And bin format misc is a neat Linux feature which can solve the above shortcomings and turn Go into a true scripting language. And if you were attentive enough, you may notice that the approach is quite generic and you can just replace the Go here with any language you want. You can do like scripting in Rust, C++, Haskell, yeah, and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, some useful links. Uh, this is the original blog post which triggered me to uh, do the research. So the original blog post stops that you can't have like valid Go scripts which are also compilable executables. Uh, this is why where I take over in my blog post is the second link where I say no, it's possible for real world operating system Linux if you use a bin format misc. And again, the link for, uh, for the kernel documentation for this module. And don't trust my word for it. Uh, I have even some happy customers for this approach. So, <laughs> uh, so people are actively using it and quite happy about it. Yep, that's it. Uh, I try to keep it fast, so we're all going to get lunch. Thank you for your attention.